So when plotting a hyperbola um, and solving problems for it, we need to keep in mind everything we've learned about the key features we can see from the equation, but it's also important to get the points correct. So a useful way to do this is actually to use the table function, kind of like we did for parabolas and all the other graphs. So if we go to table, wherever it is on your calculator, you can enter in the function. And you just need to be really, really careful here that you make sure for parabolas you always have brackets, like they are given here, on the bottom, if there's more than one thing. Because sometimes they can give you an equation like y equals 2x plus 1 minus 3, and they haven't written brackets in there. You need to draw them in and put them into your equation, otherwise it won't turn out right. So here I've already got an equation in there, what I don't want, so I'll delete it and type in. But I want 3, and you can use the fraction button if you like, or you can use the divide button. But I'll use the brackets, x, again always using the x underneath the red button, minus 4, bracket, and then plus 2, enter. And the next thing to check is use um, set, check, to make sure that the scale of the graph given to you is actually reasonable with what you've actually expected to get in the table. So if I go to set, currently I'm only going to get values between 0 and 20, which won't help me out very much because I need negatives. So let's change that to match what the graph has shown, or the plot has shown. Negative 10 to 10, and we'll leave it as a step of 1 because those are going up in 1s. Hit table, and now we've got some information to look at. So let's take a look. I notice that at negative 10 I've got numbers that are similar to maybe 1.8 or so. So at negative 10, I'm almost at 2, but not quite there. And scrolling down, let's find some more that look reasonable to plot. Negative 2 is at 1.5, so that's 1.5. Not a lot of change. How about at 1 and 1? So 1 and 1. two and a half, negative three and negative one, so three and negative one. And then I've got error, and that seems really strange, but don't freak out, that's okay. The error tells you that you've got an asymptote there. Remember that the graph can't actually be on that line. It will never reach a value of x equals four. And you can see that here, that your vertical, sorry, your asymptote is always going to be at 4 here, so we know that it can't actually ever be 4, so that's all the error means, and that's okay, you can ignore it. Um, so we'll go on to the other side, 5 and 5. Now we're up here all of a sudden, and that's okay. 6 and 3 and a half. 7 and 3. 8 and 2.75 about 10 and 2.5. So based on the information I can get from this particular table, I could start to connect those points, but I also sort of want to just double check that I know I should have a vertical and horizontal asymptote in here. And I know that this plus 2 should give me the horizontal, that should shift me up 2. And this minus 4, that should give me the vertical, and that will shift me, in this case, right by 4. And again, to double check if you want your calculator before you draw in the line, hit G continuous. Doesn't help me at all. So try zoom, auto. Still not very helpful. So how about zoom and, sorry, not zoom. Let's do window. Window. And let's just match it to what we've got here. So x min, let's go negative 10. X max goes to 10, negative 10 to 10. Scale of 1, that we don't have to worry about. Y min goes from negative 10. Y max is 10. Scale of 1, that's fine. Try this out again, G continuous, and now you can kind of see that going on there. So G continuous is limited in that we'll only plot for the points that you've got so far. So if you do want more detail, you can go back and do a smaller step, and you'll get more information. So again, in the table, that would give you heaps of numbers, but in the plot, you'll actually see you've got a little bit more information there.
so you can see like we've kind of got started here it should curve up and curve down my vertical asymptote should be on 4 so if you want to you can sketch in that 4 and my horizontal asymptote should be on 2 and you can see that there so again if you weren't certain if you make the step smaller into 0.5s you've got a lot more points that you can plot on there so it gives us more numbers to play with or to actually make sure that we get somewhat close to but I think we've got enough on here so let's take a look it should get close to 2 but never actually gets there and then starts to dive down and then should get close to 4 but never actually get there same thing here should get close to 4 but never actually get there and should get close to 2 but never actually get there and be really careful because they will mark you off if you actually put your line for your graph past the asymptote so for instance had I crossed the 4 they'd mark you off for that it cannot go past or even reach touch that line so that's our plotting and we have a few questions to answer on this particular graph so let's just take a look at them write the equation for the vertical asymptote so remember the equation for the vertical asymptote is always going to be an x equals something because the value of x never changes and in this case x is equal to 4 and I can see that again from right there the equation for the horizontal asymptote tells me that a y value never changes in this case y is equal to 2 and I can see that right from the equation there use the equation to find a value of x when y is equal to 3 so here you have to remember like we did with parabolas substitute in what you know and in this case I know that y is equal to 3 but x is what I'm looking for so you might remember that we can go into graph and g solve to do this if you want but we have to show the working of the equation so the first thing that we'll do is actually substitute it in so y is equal to 3 so instead of writing y I'm gonna write 3 3 is equal to 3 divided by bracket x minus 4 bracket plus 2 feel free to use your algebra to solve that out or use solver but to get more familiar with our calculators abilities in graph let's go to g solve so first let's draw that out again sometimes it'll error out on you when you ask it to draw when you've entered it in table first don't freak out just type the equation again so 3 bracket x minus 4 plus 2 and there we can see it so remember a very important thing for gsolve is that you have to be able to see the features you're looking for so make sure you get a zoom window that's appropriate and let's check when y is equal to 3 so we can use gsolve we'll arrow over and when y is equal to 3 that means we're looking for an x value so we're going to use xcalc because we need to calculate what x is when y is equal to 3 if it tells you that value is not found it means you haven't zoomed to the appropriate window but here we have and you can say that x is equal to 3 sorry y is equal to 3 and x will be equal to 7 so we could write our answer here x is equal to 7 again show your substitution and then you can use gsolve or equation solver to do that for the next bit they ask us to use the equation to find the value of y when x is equal to 15 so here we want to know y and x is equal to 15 again substitute in so y is equal to 3 divided by now x is 15 minus 4 plus 2 so you can in fact just type that directly into your calculator because you don't have to rearrange or anything and get the number or if you want to be using gsolve go ahead and go back and find in this case y calc because I'm trying to calculate y when x is equal to 15 argument error so it's a bit pissed off at me and let's figure out why what happens if I zoom out because can I see x is equal to 15 in here yet I might not be able to and we'll zoom out one more time and now let's try gsolve 
here I'm looking for y again, when x is equal to 15. And there it is. So, like I said, if you can't actually see it in the window, it'll just tell you that you're a ter terrible person and you've done something wrong. So all you have to do is make sure you've entered the equation correctly and zoom out until you can actually see what you're looking for. So here, when x is equal to 15, y is equal to 2.27. So we would say y is equal to 2.27. And that's repeating, but you can just round it to 2.27. That's fine. Um, so, again, don't forget that you have to be able to write your equations for vertical asymptotes and you can use G-Solve to find more information as long as you can see it. Other bits of information that we can use real quick for G-Solve, just to remind us of these bits. Go back to G-Solve. Remember that root is going to be your x-intercept. So let's just zoom in. Oops. Uh, zoom in so we can see a little bit better what we're looking at. We'll do one more. So G-Solve root gives you your x-intercept, so right here, my x-intercept. If I needed to identify that, or was asked to tell me what the value is, the x-intercept there is at the point 2.5 comma 0. 2.5 comma 0. And we can do g-solve and look at the y-intercept as well. So that's y is there, how you pronounce that. And you can see that's where it crosses the y-axis, so here that's my y-intercept, and the point for that is going to be 0, 1.25, and that should get you there. So those are most of the key features that they could possibly ask for, and yeah, don't forget that the calculator is really powerful and can do a lot of stuff for you, but make sure you're thinking logically about it too, and kind of checking to make sure your answers make sense.